to the valley one day to pray. So God has a I say it all day. Keep me up. Come on, put your hands together and give him a praise. Come on, if you really love him, clap your hands and give him a praise and shout hallelujah. Come on, let's shift the atmosphere. Come on, open up your mouth. Glory to your name, Jesus. Lord, you are wonderful. Lord, you are mighty. Lord, you are powerful. Lord, you are a good father. Lord, you don't make mistakes. Lord, you are the king of kings. Lord, you are the Lord of lords. Lord, you are Alpha Omega. Lord, you are the beginning, the end, the first, the last. God, you are everything. And we thank you, we appreciate you. Lord, touch us tonight. Touch us this afternoon, Lord. 
Lord, touch our minds right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you fall fresh in here. Lord, allow your spirit to rest, rule, and abide right now. Say that you are a liar. We arrest you right now in the name of Jesus. We lock you up and throw the key away. We apprehend you right now in the name of Jesus. Say to the Lord, rebuke you. Every hindering spirit we rebuke right now. Every hindering spirit, every heaviness, every blockage, every whirlwind, we rebuke right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, allow this service to go the direction you want it to go. In the name of Jesus, let your will be done. Allow the atmosphere to be conducive to your will, God. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. Touch the hearts and minds of your people. Allow them to be receptive to what you're going to deliver today. Lord, remove me out the way. I'm nothing without you. Lord, use me as your vessel. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we glorify you. We praise you. We lift you up. In your name, Jesus, come on. Let's give our Lord and Savior, our King, another hand praise. We honor him. Certainly give honor and respect to my pastor and father, Apostle C.A. Coward, to the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, to the board of bishops, our district overseer, Bishop Kevin Williams, our district elder, District Elder Andrew Johnson, and Certainly thank God for the ministers that are with me in the pulpit, Minister Randall, Minister Woods. We thank God. Amen. For each and every one of you. Amen. So good to see China. God bless you, China. <laughs> Praise him. You're doing all right. <laughs> thank God for you. Good to see Deborah again. Amen. Certainly thank God for my daughter being back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Shantia. Shantia, something with an S. Kiwi. I'm sorry. Shanti or Shante, something, something around that corner. Everybody names the all the S, but Kiwi know I love her and it's so good to see her. Amen. Cause God, give God a hand praise again. Amen. Got the whole crew, amen. Came out of church today and we thank God. You may be seated. I want to talk to you today, amen, about getting past the surface level. Getting past the surface level. And God, I want to go deeper. Amen. I dare you to just open your mouths and say, Lord, I want to go deeper. There's just five of y'all that said it. I need everybody in here to say, Lord, Lord I, want I want to go deeper. Go deeper. Amen. Uh, I think that when we've mastered everything, we have yet to master God. I think that we have mastered church. We've mastered the jump, the shout, the run. Amen. We even mastered trying to be friends. But we haven't mastered getting deeper in God. Amen. That's good. And the challenge, amen, today and for the rest of our lives, we want to see. God, how deep can I get in you? Because to be honest, some of us are just touching the surface and we think we're doing something. God done showed us a little dream and we done <laughs> prophesied one time. And we fit. See, see, when you're deep in God, God compare himself to water. And when you get so deep, you need something, an oxygen tank to carry you while you're down there. See, this is why you can't get that deep unless you have God's spirit. And see, God's spirit is like the oxygen tank when you get in the water. I can't breathe. God, I wish I had a few of y'all with me. I can't have copper. You know, we, we talked about the mind, you know, the brain, it, 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 it allows you to have the oxygen pool. Amen. Amen. And so when I get down there in that water and I get real deep, I need extra oxygen to understand what's going on around me. And see, the problem is, amen, we think because we got a, a, a decent prayer life that we're deep in God. Amen. amen. Oh, God, I wish I had a few of y'all. We think because we can pray long that we found that deep place in God. Mm. Let me tell you something. 
God is too deep for even way to get deep in it. You still can't touch him. My God. Lord have mercy. Good. You know, give me John chapter 4. I want to show you this because, see, we've learned so much, but we have yet to tap in. There's a difference between learning and tapping. Amen. And I think we've mastered baptism in Jesus' name. You know you got to have the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance, but we've yet to get to the deep place in God. See, when you get so deep in the water, all you see is the water. Mm -hmm. My God. Yes. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Yes. The deeper I get in God, I start to recognize his omnipresence. Even when hell is breaking loose, I can still see God in the hell. You know, David said, you know, if, if if I make my bed in hell, I know that God will still be there with me. You know, David hit a deep part in God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And see, what we have to get past, see, just like this concrete here. See, if we get deep enough in this concrete, we'll realize that it's not just concrete here. Mm -hmm. my God. It's more than just concrete. If I drill something in this, it'll be a lot of concrete. Then I start seeing the material change to dirt. Then it get it deep into that soil. You know, when you see surface dirt, it ain't the same texture as the deep dirt. My God. The deeper I get, see, when you stay on the surface, you can become dry. My God. God. And so a lot of the saints today, they think that they're deep, but they're dry because they're not deep enough. See, when I tap into the deepness of God, it's just like the dirt. When I dig deep enough, it starts, I feel a different moisture. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. And see, it's the moisture that keeps the dirt. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And see, when, when, when I get deep enough, I understand God on a different level. Yes, hallelujah. See, we talk about having a mind of God. We talk about, you know, experiencing God. We talking about getting chills and all that stuff. That's not good enough. The chills, you know, you know you get the chills, you know, yeah, I felt something, the chill, go, that ain't good enough. That's not, that's not the deepness of God. That's just the surface, because guess what? I can lay on this floor and get a chill. Yes, sir. Amen. Lord, have mercy. But when I tap into something different, there's a different understanding. Yes. See, see, they go from calling it dirt when it's surface, then they say, I got soil. It God, I wish I had a few of y'all with me. So, so there's a, it's, it looks like the same thing, but the dirt is just dry. But when I get deep enough, then y'all ain't talking to me. Just like the water, when you look at water, it's light blue, it's like this clear color on the top. But the deeper you get, the darker it gets, meaning that I can get a deepness in God. But the problem is, saints, we, we're comfortable with the norm. We're not comfortable. See, y'all ain't used to seeing miracles every day. When I start tapping into that, then I see the deepness of God. A miracle don't shock me because miracle signs and wonders are supposed to happen. If we got a church full of believers, guess what? Miracles supposed to happen. Give me Luke chapter, Mark chapter 16. I wish I had the right church. I'm a preacher myself today. Mark 16. Thank you, Jesus. And start at 16. Uh huh. He that believeth and is baptized. All right. How many of y'all believe? Amen. Got a bunch of believers in here. How many of y'all been baptized? We got a bunch of folk that have been baptized. Uh huh. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. But he that believeth not. He that believeth not. Shall be damned. Uh huh. And these signs shall follow and them. And these signs shall do what? Follow them. Follow them that what? Believe. Your belief ain't deep enough. Mm. Oh, my God. See, we got surface believers. My God. We don't have the deep beliefs. In fact, the disciples, they were surface believers. That's why he said, I need you. When y'all leave here, I need y'all to go somewhere. And when y'all go there, I want you to lay out for 50 days. Oh my God. Because there's something deeper that I got to give you. Give me Luke. Lord, have mercy. Go down to Luke chapter, hallelujah, Luke chapter 24, and verse number 49, uh-huh. And behold, and behold, I send the promise of my father. I send the promise of my father uh -huh. upon you. Yes. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem uh -huh. until you be endued with power from on high. But wait a minute. Why don't I have the power 
that you gave me to suffice me when you gave me in Mark, Mark chapter, uh, Matthew 10. <laughs> now, they have power in Matthew 10. Watch this. Go to Matthew chapter 10. And then God said, there's another power. There's a deeper thing that I want to give you. We can't just co get comfortable with the surface things. I just want to feel a shift of God. No, I don't just want to feel a shift of God. I want to see, you know, I want to see God really move in this place. Get out of the norm of just, oh, bounce around, shout around, run around, do this around. No, I, I need God to do something different. God, see, when you get deep enough, God start to blow your mind because your mind get on a different level. You don't think the same. You ain't expecting the same thing. Sometimes our expectation of God is so low, y'all ain't saying that, because I didn't get deep enough. See, when you look out there in the water, there are some things that have not even been discovered yet, but you tap into it when you get deep enough. A lot of us have not seen God in a different way because we're not deep enough. Ah, you just, you, you comfortable, amen, just swimming on top of the water, can't go under. Y'all ain't saying, y'all ain't talking to me. Because when you go under, you got to adjust yourself. You got to adjust your breathing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got to adjust the way you think. You got to adjust your sight. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. You know, deep saints used to say, you know, folks that got real deep in God. And, and that word deep came from people that were far in God. And so the, the deep saints would always say, you know, I know you're going through something, but there's just this feeling. Everything's going to be all right. That's what they, you know why the deep saints said that? Because they were deep enough to know that there are going to be situations that arise. But the deep saints know that God is, his hand ain't sharp. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God, the Bible said that his hand is not sharp. His ears is not heavy. God could save you out of whatever you're hitting. But because I'm just on the surface, I really haven't seen God. No, y'all ain't talking. A lot, a lot of people have not really seen the art of God. Y'all haven't really ta tapped into the, the deep things of God. Let me give you some Bible now. Go down there, hallelujah, to 1 Corinthians. Look at somebody and say, I got to go deeper. And we sing the songs, I want to go deeper. We sing the songs, I want to be deep with God. But then our actions don't display if we're really going deeper. Ah, oh, God. You know, when they, the divers got to take a course to know how to get deep. When even, listen, let me tell you something. You can jump in deep water and don't go deep. If you're, y'all ain't saying nothing. If you're not in the right formation, you won't go deep. But they teach the divers to straighten up. Lord, come on. Oh, Lord, I feel this thing in here. They, they, they teach the divers, say, when you get up there, you got to straighten up. And see, the body, you know, Matthew already told us that straight and narrow. Y'all ain't talking to me. And so for me to get to that deep place, I got to straighten up a little bit. I can't be in my feelings. I can't. Y'all ain't talking to me. I, I can't get upset about everything. I can't be. Y'all ain't talking. I got to straighten up. I watched those divers. I said, man, when I jump in 12 feet, you know, I, I get about maybe four or five feet in the water and they come bring me right back up. And it's because I'm doing cannonballs. I'm just jumping in there and, and splashing in the water. But when you get your formation right, and I've seen a lot of people, they'll put their hands like this and then try to dive in there. Some of y'all missing that thing. Some of y'all, some of y'all missing it. They put their hands together. You know, they, they, they got their hands together to get deeper in there. And see, the way you get deeper in God, it, you, you, your prayer life has a lot to do with the places that you travel in God. In fact, some of y'all need to put these plates down and start fasting and God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Can't go 10 minutes without eating something. Oh, Lord, I'm getting in trouble now. See, if I want, listen, if you're praying for 30 minutes every day, if you're praying an hour a day, I don't care if you're praying three hours a day. If you have not went deeper in God, you ain't doing something right. There's a strategy when it comes down to getting deep in God. I said, well, I pray every day. 
How are you praying? Oh, God. See, you got to be able to see some, some, you know, if I get, amen, a nail and a hammer and try to beat through this concrete, it's, it's going to be challenging. I need the right tools to penetrate so I can get deeper. And see, we don't understand how to penetrate to get in that deep place in God. We think that it's in the run and the dance and the shout and the holler. Let me tell you something. You'll do more penetration in worship. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm about to get in some trouble now. See, see, Jesus met this woman at the well. Give me John chapter 4. There's a woman... Jesus met. She was talking some strange stuff. <laughs> Give me four and start at, how you start at 13, huh? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Now watch this. <laughs> <laughs> God is like a drink My God. <laughs> or like water. And he said, you'll never be thirsty again. Well, how could I ever be thirsty if I'm in the water? If I get deep enough in the water, the water touching all parts. So this is what Jesus was trying to tell him. He said, listen, you got to get lost in me. My God, yes. That's the deepness of God, get lost. So the water ain't just in the mouth, but it's on the head. It ain't just on the head, but it's on the feet. How, you know, when you get in water... And it's submerging you. It's touching every part of you. Read, uh-huh. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, uh -huh. springing up into everlasting life. Yes. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband, Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that saith thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Uh -huh. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. So now, he's giving them a, a, a deeper metaphor. Try to get them to understand in order to tap into me and get something out of me. Worship is a place. And he said a lot of times people worship and don't know what they worship. Don't have an idea, but we're not tapping into the deepest. Now, watch this. The, the the first place that the Bible mentions about life and creatures or the first thing of life came from where? Came from the water. Give me Genesis. This is why if any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Now, when did I become new? What did I have to do? Baptize. I had to get in the water. God trying to teach us something. We got to stay deep in there. See, you can't be your, listen, watch this. You can't be yourself in the water. You got to have that swimsuit on. You got to have an oxygen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You can't be you in water. And you try to be you, you will die. My God. And see, the object of the game, amen, is for us to die to ourselves. This, this is when I found out that I've become deep in God is because I'm dying. See, everything that God considered himself to be in the scriptures, you can't survive in it without something. He called himself water. You can't survive in water or you'll die. You stay in water long enough, you'll die. Get in some fire. You sure enough ain't going to be in that for a long time. Even wind could kill you. If you got too much air, it'll kill you. How can breath take my breath away? My God. <laughs> so everything that God is, hallelujah, if I try to be me in it, I die. 
And this is why God considered himself these elements because it's, it's him that kills us. We die to ourselves if we're in him. If I'm in the fire long enough, I'll be gone. If I'm in the water long enough, I'll be gone. If I'm in wind long enough, you know, I did some, I did this experiment of, uh, uh, what is it, outdoor or indoor diving, skydiving. I tried that. With all of the wind in that machine, you have to have a mask on or you'll die because of the wind. Somebody shout hallelujah. Watch this. Now go down to the Genesis. The first thing or the first place that God mentions deep, he deals with something specific. <laughs> hallelujah. All right, give me Genesis chapter 1. Start at 1, uh-huh. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes. And the earth was without form and void. Uh huh. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and and the spirit of God, the spirit of God, moved. So now we know that the spirit of God got to be deep, but then it, it coincides with what? Water. So God gives a metaphor dealing with Himself and water. Considering it to be deep. Then he goes to 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. I hope y'all getting this. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. <laughs> and you know, uh, chapter 2. You know, it's, it's amazing that, you know, all of the common animals, amphibians, reptiles that's in the water, all of the common ones are seen not in a deep level. They, they, a lot of them surface. You know, you got sharks that have surfaced, whales that surface, dolphins definitely surface because uh, dolphins actually can't stay in the water because they have to come to the surface to breathe. Amen. That's amazing that God created an a, a, a animal in the water that still got to come up to catch his breath. <laughs> you know, y'all see them turtles in that water. Them turtles can stay in there for 30 minutes. That's it. After 30 minutes, they got to come on up and give this some breath. But so, the things that we know commonly to man are the animals that's not in the deep of the water. Every so often, they start to uh, discover, say, man, I didn't know that this was in the water. He said, well, how in the world did you find that or figure that out? I went deep enough. I didn't know that God could do this, but when I go deep enough, then I know him. See, you know, the disciples didn't know who he was because they didn't see the deepness in him. All they saw was the sun on the outside. Watch this. Give me John 14. Then we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. God is a deep God. And see, I want to get to a place where I'm deep enough to understand some of the things of God. Because you ain't going to understand everything about God. But if I get deep enough, I can understand some of the things. John chapter 14. And start at 6, uh huh. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father so also. So now... Everybody that walked with Jesus knew him, right? But they only knew him as what? The son. So they didn't know him, really. Only way they could know him is that they had to get deep enough. Give me Matthew 16. This is what, what happened with Peter. Peter recognized something. Peter had an epiphany. Matthew 16, 13, uh-huh. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his, disci his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? See, he, Jesus was asking a question that he knew people wasn't deep, deep enough to answer. He said, well, who, who do they say that I am? And see, people only run their mouth about what they see on the outside. They don't know what's on the inside. So, so, so you got, they, they, they got these, he said, well, who the man say that? These folks that just see me, they see the surface of what they say that I am. Read, uh-huh. 
And they said, they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Some Elias. So, so, so they had a rumor going about who they thought Jesus was because they wasn't deep enough. Mm, my God. <laughs> so people will think you are somebody that you're not because they ain't deep enough in God. When you're deep enough in God, you can look at somebody and say, oh, I can't bother with that one. Touch not my anointing. I can't do that prophet no harm. When you get deep enough in God, you'll say, oh, I can't fool. I'm there. I'm fooling with that person. Your behavior start to change. And then you won't start. You'll start treating people different in the church. Because you, when you get deep enough in God, you'll understand that if I talk about him, I'm talking about God. Amen. Oh, my. I'm looking deep like that ain't book. All right, where we at? Uh, let, me, let me give you this first. Go, give me that uh, first Corinthians. Hold, hold there. We're going to come back. All right. First Corinthians 12. All right. 12 and 12. Uh -huh. For as the body is one and have many members and all the members of that one body, being many are one body, so also is Christ. Uh -huh. So one, one body, so also is Christ. Go to the 27th verse. Uh -huh. Now ye are the body of Christ. Now ye are the body of Christ. Then it goes a little more specific. Uh -huh. And members. Members. In particular. Particularly members. So we are members of God's body. When I get deep enough, I know I can't talk about Vante. Because if I talk about Vante, I know I'm talking oh, about God. Oh, my God. Good. Oh, my God. I start talking about uh, 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 Mike Boyer. Oh, man, I'm talking about God because this is his body. And if this is his body, I can't talk about his body. When I get deep enough, I understand that. You can tell when deep, the saints ain't deep. They call themselves deep because of the way they dress. That don't make you deep. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking. I don't care how many long dresses you put on. I don't care how many clergy collars, but you can have a nice little shirt like I got on today. Amen. But that don't mean you deep. <laughs> deep things of God is understanding God on another level. How to treat people. I see, oh, and I can't talk about Minister Laurent because that's God's body. That's a body part over there. That's, that's God's fingertip over there. I can't bother with that. Y'all ain't talking. Oh, that's God's heel over there. I can't bother with the heel. That heel got a job. Somebody shout hallelujah. Give me the scripture you just left from. Where was you at? Matthew 16. Some Elias. Some Elias. And others, Jeremiah, uh -huh. are one of the prophets. So now there's a rumor going on about Jesus because they're looking at the external because they haven't got to the internal because they have not seen the deep things. In fact, let me tell you something. If you've never saw the inside of a body, you haven't got deep in anatomy. Y'all ain't saying that. Pastor, what you mean? Well, if all I see is everything on the outside, I never saw a heart before. I never saw a lung before. I never even seen what the rib cage looked. I ain't never seen what the stomach, the intestines looked like. I've never seen any of that. So I'm not deep enough in anatomy because I don't know what's going on the inside. All you know about your face and your hair, y'all ain't saying nothing. And your little smile, amen. That's all you focus on. That, that's it. But that's the surface. Lord, when I saw the inside of the body, I said, oh, my God, it, it, it's so surreal. When you look at the inside of the body, it's like, is that real? You start seeing the muscles, all the blood everywhere. You say, oh, my God, what in the world? Amen. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying nothing. I know some of y'all brothers know what I'm talking about, that y'all had children, you and your wife had children. Y'all start seeing something. It's like, man, what in the world? How did that happen? But then when you start seeing the inside of the body, you start seeing the depthness of the body. We haven't really seen the inside. Everybody's so surface just on Jesus, they don't know that he God. This is what they're saying. They said, some said John the Baptist, some said Elias, others said Jeremiah is one of the prophets. Read, uh-huh. He said unto them. He said unto them. But whom say ye that I am? He said, well, now, y'all been walking around with me for a long time. Who do y'all say that I am? Read, uh-huh. 
And Simon Peter answered and said, Out of everybody that was there, there was only one person that was deep. You imagine how many, you know, people, you, you walk around people throughout the church all day, and then there's probably one person that's deep and then tapped into God. <laughs> We're talking about people that was walking with God in the flesh, and they wasn't deep. Sure know it's a struggle now. Folk, that's why folk ain't deep now. It's a struggle. They was walking with them and wasn't deep enough. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Read, huh? Thou art the son of Christ, uh, the, the Christ, uh -huh. the son of the living God. Thou art the Christ. How you know I'm the Christ? Then you know I'm the son of the living God, uh-huh. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Borjana, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. So see, now watch this. See, when I get deep enough, uh, 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 Dana, when you talk to me, you can't really, it's, it's, it's hard, I, I can't really receive it. God got to unlock my eyes when I get deep enough. See, it said flesh and blood. See, a common, I can preach a message to everybody in here, and some people will get it and some people won't. And it's because some people can be deep enough and some of them still surface. So he said, listen, Everybody has been, everybody been walking with me all this long time. And only one person said one thing. Then he said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. So it had to have been something spiritual. And then we get down to the first Corinthians chapter 2. The power in this. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, I want to be deeper. I want to be deeper. Say, I want to go deeper. I want to go deeper. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. Watch this, uh-huh. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Uh -huh. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. So there is a depthness in the deep things of God. I can't search it out. I got to get deep enough in my spirit. Uh -huh. We'll not to stir that inner man. We'll not to get that, get that spirit. You know, see, this is how you can be in your bed. And then you could travel to New York in a dream. Amen. Because the spirit can travel, but the flesh can't in that aspect. You know, in that, in that period of time, you can close your eyes and be in New York, wake up, you're back in Georgia. <laughs> the flesh. But that spirit, when I get deep enough in God, I could travel and get some depthness of God. The disciples were asking all these questions. Jesus said, hey, listen, there's many things I got to tell you. But you can't handle it yet. Because you ain't deep enough. Let's just read, uh-huh. For no man knoweth. For, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Uh -huh. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So now watch this. There are some things that are freely given, that are deep, that if we're deep enough, we can receive it. And then there's some restricted things that God is not going to reveal. Everybody can't handle everything because of what level they're on. So this is a time for the saints to try to get deeper in God and not just be on this surface level. Just on this bare, but you can't, listen, let me tell y'all something. Stop being comfortable on that regular level of God. Yeah. Sometimes we just like, well, as long as I just, you know, just be real. Some of y'all be real. As long as I make the rapture, it's all right. <laughs> I, I want to experience something deep in God and not just make the rapture. I want to be able to experience God on a different level. Yeah. And somebody say, I want to go deeper. Give me John chapter 16. John 16 and 12. I have yet many things to say unto you. I have yet many things to say unto you. But ye cannot bear them now. But you can't get it right now because you ain't deep enough. Mm -mm. So much, God, listen, all y'all have, some of y'all got gifts in here, but it cannot be activated until you get deep enough. Because then, you know, when I was a young, I was a young preacher, all I did, one of, all I wanted to do was prophesy. I used, to, I used to want to prophesy so bad, and I used to be on the phone telling people they had on. It was just the gift. I had a strong gift. I mean, prophecy was so heavy on me. I'm talking, I can tell somebody what they're eating over the phone, like that. And don't miss. 
I wanted to know so good, but but it, I wasn't deep. I just had a gift. I didn't understand what I had. See, when you don't understand what you have and God's giving you just a little glimpse of it and you're not deep enough to handle it, what happens is you will use that gift in the wrong time. I've said some things. The Lord showed me some stuff and I'm guilty of it. The Lord showed me some things and I spoke ahead of time because I wasn't deep enough to handle it. Oh, Eli, that ain't the time to say it yet. I wanted to say it so bad because I knew it. God revealed it to me, but because I wasn't deep enough, I didn't understand the timing. And see, what God is trying to do, he wants you to get deep enough so that you could understand timing. You say, well, how can you understand? See, when you get deep enough in God, see, God is not even operated by time, but places us in time. So I have to figure out when God's going to move. When am I supposed to say this? See, when you really get deep in God, God will speak to you and say, not now, and you'll shut up. <laughs> I mean, let me tell you something, because let me tell you something about gifts. Gifts can puff you up. Yes, you, you prophesy and hit a bunch of times and start hitting and hitting. You wouldn't tell everything. You wouldn't talk about everything at all one time. And see, sometimes God move on me so heavy, I get so deep, I leave because I know. I said, I, I can't handle it. It's too deep right now. It's almost like you're drowning. Some of y'all have seen times, especially revivals and stuff, God will use me in such a powerful way, and I just hand the mic up. I got to get out of there because it feels like I'm about to drown. Because you get so deep. And when you get deep in God, you understand timing and some stuff you don't understand. Some stuff you see like, ah, okay, I'll just say this. And this is why, you know, the Bible talks about we prophesy in what? Part. God, have mercy. Give me, give me the hallelujah. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Thank you, Jesus. 13. 1 Corinthians 13 and start at 9. Watch this. I'm read. For we know in part. For we know in part. And we prophesy in part. And we prophesy in part. See, oh God, watch this. Oh my God. Frankie could have part three. Huh, glory to God. Christina could have part one. And he may see it and speak it before part one is revealed. And so if it's prophesied ahead of time. You can mess it up. You can mess up with, see, and, and hallelujah. You know, see, the Bible talks about in the book of, uh, when we study the gifts in, 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 in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it starts talking about somebody's, you know, speaking in tongue. It talks about, by course, let them interpret. Because one, huh, glory, one person will have the foot, have a part of the message, that person will have one, that person. But if you just think that you got it all, the, we will miss the step because you're not deep enough. So when I'm not deep enough, I can get out of turn. Part four before part one. Part three before part two. And I, you, you can't, and then so now, the part, even the church could be getting the message. Watch this. Give me. Oh, hallelujah. 14 chapter of 1 Corinthians. Start at verse number. Thank you, Lord. 27. Jesus. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, uh -huh. let it be by two. Yes. Or the most by three. And that by course. And let one interpret. So now I understand now that if there's an interpretation, you got some people that got different parts of what God's trying to say. But if I'm not deep enough, I could miss my part. I got. And you got saints that ain't deep enough. And this is how we could try to minister to somebody. And then if my timing is off because I ain't deep enough to understand what God's trying to say, I could miss that me or mess that message up. Amen. Yeah, the Lord been speaking to me and told me to tell you this. But you know God told you don't tell him yet. It ain't the time yet. But you so, because you just got a word, you just so ready to get the word out. You want somebody to know that you got the gift of prophecy so bad 
to where you just got to urgently speak and say something. That's why some of y'all, y'all call me and say, Pastor, the Lord showed me this. I say, just write it down. Let's just wait. Let's see what's going to happen. The Lord showed me that. God spoke and said this. Because a lot of things that we see in God speak, you know, God speak in parts. Everybody don't get the whole entire message. Watch this. You have the apostleship. But you got 12 daytime apostles and you got 12 nighttime apostles. So you got 12 apostles to the Jews, then you got 12 apostles to the Gentiles. But the Gentile apostle can't give a Jew message because it was out of sequence. Oh, God. The way God, and then God, God is so wise. God shows us in creation how he wants the world to operate. So he said, now, I can't make a man yet because I need the earth, because I need the dirt in the ground in order, y'all ain't saying nothing. I need the water on the earth because there has to be a rain. So in order for me to make a man, I got to create, y'all ain't saying nothing. And then I got to create the garden first, then put the man in the garden. So the way God operates, he puts play one, play two, play three. He got the whole playbook and it's in order. But when we're not deep enough, we miss the order. All of the days of, you know, the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, God made man. Why did he do it in day? God could have did everything in one day. Why, 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 why in the world? Y'all ain't saying nothing. We're talking about God. God could have made the whole world in a blink of eye. He could have spoken and it could happen in one day. Why in the world would he do day by day to let us know that there's parts in everything? Why would he say winter, summer, fall, spring? There are parts in everything. And one has to come before the other. So I have to understand the depth of God. How deep is God? How deep are you? Because we know God is, I mean, he's deep. You still don't understand how he sits outside of everything and created everything and ain't come from nobody. <laughs> Give me Hebrews chapter 7. I'm about to close here. I just feel good now. Y'all don't. Yes. Hebrews chapter 7, verse number 1. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. Uh -huh. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, uh -huh. which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent. So, having so it's the, you know, Melchizedek in this description is talking about how God is. Mm -hmm. He said he's without descent, meaning that nobody created him. You ain't deep enough to understand that. <laughs> Nobody created you, 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 your mind. See, the, the mind can't even think past that. Because, you know, just like the theory, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Mm -hmm. Our mind concept could, can't, 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 it, it can't grasp it. You have people trying to figure out, well, what, did the chicken come first or did the egg come first? Well, the chicken got to come from the egg in order to exist. But then the egg got to come from the chicken. <laughs> so then, wait, wait, it, it, you know, trying to understand God, on, that's just a, that's, a, that's one deep thing that we try to explain. How's God outside of everything? But then the Bible says this. He's outside of everything, but he's in everything. Yes. <laughs> what in the world? So you're telling me <laughs> that God is outside of everything, but he's inside of everything. That's some deep stuff. He's omnipresent. My God. He's everywhere at the same time, but then he's outside of everything. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, go back there to the John. Oh, oh, keep reading that. I'm sorry. He don't have a beginning of the days. 
Uh -huh. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. So, so, so this is saying that God was never born and then he can't die. Mm. God wasn't born and he cannot die. If that's not deep, that's heavy there. Yes, sir. How you, how you, how you wasn't born from nothing, but, and then you can't die. <laughs> Read, uh-huh. But may like unto the son of God abideth a priest continually. All right, give me 1 Kings chapter 8 and 27, and I'm about to let y'all go. All right. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, uh -huh. the heaven and the heaven of heavens. The heaven and heaven of heavens. of heavens cannot contain thee. Cannot contain God. That's heaven. Mm -mm. It's saying that the outside can't contain. Now, listen to that. The outside can't hold you. Now, how does that make sense? In essence, let me, let me break it down. Let me, let, me, let me break it down for you to understand what I'm saying. See, the inside of this building can hold us. The outside can hold us. In fact, everybody in the world can stand outside at the same time and it can hold everybody. But the Bible says that outside can't hold God. That's heaven. There's no container big enough for God. There's no room big enough for God. And so this is why when he travel, he got to leave a little smoke behind. Go give me a, uh, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 6. And see, in order, for, in order for mankind to see or comprehend God, he had to put himself in the body. That's the only way that we can understand because our, our brains can't fathom God. But if I get deep enough, I can start getting some understanding and some clarity. Because a lot of things people ain't clear on about God because they ain't deep enough. They haven't, they haven't, they haven't, they haven't scratched, you know. And, and I've learned something about dogs. I don't know what they're looking for, but they, they be digging. I don't know what they I don't know what they looking for, but they my dog got looked like my, my backyard looked like the moon. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know what that is. It's craters, you know, craters in the moon, the little dip. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what they're digging for. But what if the saints had that instinct? I'm gonna dig until I hit something. And see. What dogs do, they will dig and dig and keep going to that same spot to see if they'll hit something. My gosh. <laughs> when the last time you just laid out before God until you hit something? Yeah. See, we get so discouraged. See, and, and back in the day, they used to lock in at the church. Now, and these, little, these little shutters, I'll be giving y'all a break. But these little shutters that we be having, we come in at 9 o'clock and we leave at 2 o'clock, there ain't no shut-in. We used to be in there to the we'd be over there for the whole weekend in church. That's right. Amen. Friday, Saturday, and then and then they used to, they, 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 that church we was at, they were so messed up. They'll start cooking Sunday uh, lunch or whatever upstairs at the top of the church. So we downstairs just got them fast and smell that fried fish. Yes, About to fall over in there. <laughs> When's the last time you stayed in the church? Just locked in and prayed fast. Try to get deeper. I put uh, Francois Williams, I put him on an assignment one time. How many days you locked in the church, son? Three days. I said, three days, lock in. To the pray and I want you to read. He would read and he called, he said, Pastor, it, it feels like I'm eating <laughs> while I'm reading. Wow. He was, it got, God was, you, listen, I tell you something. When you try to get deep in God, God will rearrange your thought process while you're yeah. doing it. You don't think the same way you think on land as you would in water. Your instinct isn't this. If you're in some water covered and submerged or immersed in water, if I'm immersed in water, 
My thought process isn't the same as me walking on the land. So your everyday thinking and thought process, when it comes down to getting deep in God, it can't be the same. Your deepness in work shouldn't be compared to how deep you are in God. Your depth in school shouldn't compare how deep you are in God. Amen. You get deep in God, you'll have an experience. God will start calling your name. You're trying to figure out who's calling you. Yes. Pastor, I heard somebody call my name. I, I just don't, somebody called me and said that one time. I said, well, hang around and see what he's saying. <laughs> And pastor, I just keep hearing my name. <laughs> All right, well, just, just lay around and see if you're going to say something. My God. Have you ever been that deep where you could just, you, you felt like you was close to him? When I get deep in God, there is a closeness that I feel. And see, when you get deep in God, when you feel the closeness, you feel secure. A lot, of, a lot of folks' salvation is, is funny because they ain't deep enough. See, when I know that I'm deep in God, there's a security. So it feels like he's close to me. He got me. He won't let me go. Amen. But when you always surface, tell you what, that, that salvation is always going to be shaking. It's always going to be shaking. This is why, and I use this example a lot. There are buildings that we call skyscrapers. Some people call it the skyline if you travel. Anybody know what skyline means? Some of y'all ain't never been out of Georgia or Savannah, so y'all probably don't know. So the skyline, <laughs> when you travel to big cities, you see all the tall buildings and, and the way they line up so is considered a skyline. The way they build those buildings, they don't start on a surface level. They start underground. Because if I'm standing on top of the ground, there's things that can knock me over. But if I'm built under the ground, more stability. And if we had more saints that were in depth, see, it's easy, come here, son. It's easy if I'm on top of the ground to be moved. Very easy to be moved. But if I'm in the ground, I'd be like a palm tree. You know, God is so wise, he put palm trees in Florida to withstand the weather. Those are the only trees that you see in Florida. See, because the hurricanes come. God was so wise, he said, okay, hurricanes will be in this area. I don't want my trees to fall. So when the wind blows, boisterous, only thing, it bends. And, and see, some of them palm trees, it have been like this. Come right back up. And those palm trees are built through the ground. It's amazing that oak trees look real strong, but can get, get split and knocked over. See, some of y'all look deep. Oak tree, my God. See, they overlook the people that don't look deep. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The folks that don't look deep, those are the ones that be bending but don't break. Yeah. Yeah. Now the ones that see that oak tree look like it ain't going to move. You got to write hurricane or something, that thing will crack over. Yeah. See how big an oak tree is? See the thickness of it? But then you look at a palm tree. Palm tree like a little scrawny little tree. But it's built to last. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See, I don't want to be, I, I don't want to look the part. Sometimes we can, we, sometimes we can look the part. We look like, you know, like that oak tree. That look like, it ain't breakable. Put that thing down there in Florida, let her, let Katrina come by there or something. <laughs> let Irma or somebody come on by. <laughs> Irma come back there, down there through the city to run revival down there. Boy, that tree would be split in three. But then that palm tree, it don't look like it'll survive. But because it's deep enough, it's going to survive. Some of y'all look like y'all ain't going to survive. People done, people done said, done counted you out already. But you're still surviving. 
Somebody shout hallelujah. Aren't you glad that you serve a God that will allow you to get deeper in him? And see, see, God don't want you to be surface. God wants you to be deep. Because he, 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 he longed for that connection. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm about to close here. Give me the last scripture here. Acts chapter 1. And you know the funny thing, and I'm going to get off this tree. But the, the, the funny thing about the palm tree, it looked like there's a bunch of bandages on it. Look like you, you ever see the, the little, like little strips like it's, like it's bandages on it, hmm. like it's been wounded. But it can't be destroyed. <laughs> Unbreakable. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be like that palm tree. Oh, in the book of Psalms, it talks about a tree being planted by the water. Bend but can't break. Right. 1 in 16 of Acts. Men and brethren. Th 13, I'm sorry. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. So, 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 and I'm closing. So, what happened was Jesus spent 40 days with the apostles. He did 40 days with Moses and gave him instructions. 40 days, amen. He did the same thing with Elijah, did the same thing with uh, the disciples. 40 days and gave instructions on what to do. He spent 40 days with them, then told them to go ahead and pray. So being in the face of God for 40 days, was it enough? He said, I want you to go pray for 10 more days. And that's where Acts chapter 2 comes into play. We magnify the tongues, but we don't magnify the prayer that, that was before the tongues. We magnify, let's speak in, you know, tongues came on the day of Pentecost, but we don't talk about the prayer that took place before the tongues got there. Because they had to get deeper. They had to pick. See, they stayed there. Go, uh, I'm sorry, this last scripture, 2 and 1. Acts 2 and 1, and, it, and, and we're getting ready to go. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. When the day of Pentecost was what? Fully come. See, it wasn't there all the way on day one, day two, day three, because it wasn't deep enough. My God. <laughs> they was hitting the surface on day one. Day two, they was hitting it. Three, four, five, they was hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. But then when day 10 came, they found something that was deep enough. And the Bible said it fully come. They were all, uh-huh. With one accord. One accord. In one place. One place. And suddenly. Suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. So something spectacular ha happened based upon them digging. What if they would have gave up on day one? What if they would have gave up on day two? But they kept going. They was trying to penetrate and get somewhere. You got to get off of that surface ground. And the amazing thing is with the world that we live in or the earth that God got us set up, I can go deeper, up or down. I have to get off of the surface, though. See, the surface is the ground. Airplanes, they drive on the runway. 
They try to get deeper into the atmosphere. They go up. Then you got people that are in sub, uh, submarines. And they go deeper, a different direction. But either way, you still got to get off the ground level. Mm-hmm. And I'm challenging everyone in here today, stop getting comfortable on the ground level. Don't get complacent on the ground level. Amen. Ground level too easy. Ground level is comfortable. When you get up in that, you get up in that sky, your ears pop. <laughs> you start changing your thought process. You don't see nothing but clouds. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then, and and then, and and certain in certain elements. Even in water, when you go deep enough, it does something to your ears. It pops them as well. Just, just, like, just like the sky pops your ears because you're penetrating another atmosphere, when you get in the water, it does the same as I think. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, everyone stand. I want to pray. Amen. You want to get deeper, just come a little closer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to go deeper. Where's that? Let's sing that song. We're going to praise him on break. Where that? Bring him so we can sing. I want to go deeper. Come on, lift your hands. We're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. God, I want to go deeper. I want to go deeper. Lord, take me further in you. Lord, break me from this surface, ground, level, mentality. Lord, but I want to go deeper. Lord, take me there. Oh, God. Help me to get there, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, touch her. Lord, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Lord, send the stirring. Lord, send the filling. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that desire. Lord, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you release it upon her. In the name of Jesus, cover her, Lord. Protect her, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, for your glory. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands and come closer. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, take us there. Take us to that place. Lord, I don't want to be surface. I don't want to be on that same level, Lord. Oh, God, help me to get to that place, Lord. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, God, help my mind. Help my mind, Lord. Help my mind to change, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I want to go deeper than where I am. Lord, I don't want to be in the same place, same mind, same condition. But God, touch me. Touch me, Lord. Touch me, Lord. Touch me. Hallelujah. I want to go deeper, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank you, God. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you for what I'm feeling right now. Thank you for what you're about to do through her. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, protect her, Lord. Protect her heart, God. In the name of Jesus. Glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Take me deeper. 
deeper in you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go deeper. Thank you, God. Oh, deeper. Oh, deeper, Lord, deeper in you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to go higher. Oh, I want to touch you, Lord. Oh, help me meet you where you are. Jesus in you, I want to go higher, oh, to where you are, oh, higher, oh, higher, Lord, I want to go, oh, deeper, I'm in desperate to meet you where you are, want to go deeper, Jesus, oh, 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 oh,
tell you this the transition that he's making in your life it may seem like you're alone but God said he's there sometimes you feel like you've you're caught in between and you you play softly just don't play louder than what I'm speaking but sometimes it feel like you're lonely and you're trying to find your way out but God got you in that place because he wants your attention. There was a place in God where, you know, he was on fire. He was at, at an altitude. Some things happened. And so now God is in his rebuilding stage with you. That's why you feel like like an emptiness or you like need to fill some voids in your life. But God said he did that intentionally to get your attention, to bring you back to him because you got so much to offer the kingdom of God. And if you promise God, make those necessary steps that he wants you to take, everything else will be fine. God is actually, to be 100% honest, God's rearranging your friends. That's why people seem like they're dropping out your life like that. So many people, are different. they seem like, it's like, what's going on? Why, why it seems like you by yourself, or it seems like you, you can't make it past this, past that. Without this person, that person, God said he's rearranging your friends. Because where he want to take you, they can't go. They can't go there. Thank you, Lord. I want to go deeper. Thank you, Jesus. I am to go deeper. I'm getting ready to go. Thank you, Jesus. Stand, we're getting ready to go. I encourage everyone, I think they have food again. Encourage everyone to stay around and let's fellowship and eat together and let's enjoy one another. Amen. With uplifted hands, by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, rest room and with your hits now and forever. Somebody shout, ask for me and my house. We will, we shall. And we must serve the Lord. Hug somebody and tell them you love them. And there's nothing they can do about it.